is the new integration of uh, service <coughs> service requests and uh, how to action service requests within ACS. Um, it's an important department. Um, it's got lots of uh, lots of different foibles, lots of different um, quirks, if you will, um, and it kind of gets broken down into supplier uh, service requests or um, or ACS um, involved requests. So I'm going to break this down into two. I'm going to start with the uh, simpler of the two. Um, which is uh, when we get a service request that involves <coughs> one of our local suppliers. So when somebody contacts us now uh, in regards to a service request, um, they need to submit a form. Um, this form has been created by uh, a program called um, Adobe Form Central, which uh, we're utilizing. Uh, but let's start at the start. So somebody contacts showroom or warehouse and we uh, open up our email and we go to our drafts. Okay, so we've got a draft for just about everything. So we've got service responses and service requests. Now, when somebody uh, contacts anywhere in the company for a service request, we go to this service request uh, draft email and we forward this uh, to them. A quick run through. <coughs> uh, firstly, uh, let me just uh, eliminate the extra information that we don't need. And uh, this as well. Now, uh, I'm sending this from service because uh, I have access to the service email. Uh, if you're in a showroom, you may send this from uh, your own personal email. It doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that uh, the, the customer gets the uh, important summary points about what they purchased and why and how and their rights um, and uh, the service request form. Uh, it explains that there's a form enclosed and they need to uh, either open this form, enter the information on this live form and submit it. Or they can click on this link, which will take them to the uh, online version, depending on their compatibility of their browser, and they can go through the online form. Uh, things such as date, name, uh, invoice number, address, city, etc., store of purchase, so on and so forth. I'll just close this for now. And I'll go back to this. So once that's sent to the customer, it's on the onus of the customer to give us the information. Uh, about their problem, uh, about when they bought it, when it was installed, and what the problem is. Uh, you'll notice here that no less than five descriptive photographs of the issue may be required to progress. Um, in the scenario of a of a, like a local supplier, um, commonly we don't need that. All right. So <clears throat> after that's sent off to the customer. We will in time receive a response. That response will come through to the service email. Um, looking like this. ACS service request uh, response received. <coughs> Excuse me. In this particular scenario, uh, Michael Davis, uh, invoice number 600696 um, from Mossman, uh, received a toilet, uh, a Vola 3 toilet. Uh, on the uh, 6th of the 2nd and is reporting the fact that it's cracked on the 12th of the 2nd. Um, look, in reality, uh, we could uh, outrightly refuse uh, this uh, request because uh, the damage wasn't reported within 24 hours of receipt of the goods. However, we'll respond appropriately. Now, That's what it looks like to us. Uh, the customer gets a response form as well, automatically uh, via this service, this paid service, and it explains to them that they will be contacted within 72 hours of receipt of this email. <coughs> so what do we get from this? We get this information. Uh, now knowing that this is a Vola 3 toilet, we now know that this is from an external supplier, a local supplier. 
Uh, I ultimately know that because I can uh, go to uh, my, uh, my price list uh, and if I look up all the three uh, and I highlight that row and scroll over, uh, I can see that uh, the supplier is KDK and this is the KDK code, KDK double two. So where to from here? Okay. So <clears throat> under uh, the Google Drive, there is a service request folder um, and it's split into customer and supplier. So I'll just expand this customer folder. There's a customer folder PDFs with, uh, with essentially uh, reference numbers um, complete. Uh, that's obviously for when they're complete and then we can drag them into there and they're done. Uh, and then images. Uh, images are kept uh, after they're sent through there and we reference them to the reference that we give to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, to the form that's sent uh, and then we, um, we file those away uh, for you know, any future needs. So let's use this as an example because this will be live in Adobe Form Central. So after we receive this, um, we, uh, we will open up Adobe Form Central, which is a local program on the computer for anybody who uh, who's involved uh, with this element of the business. So here's Adobe Form Central. You need to sign in, you need your own Adobe ID. Uh, once signed in, uh, you will see that there's a couple of forms live and, um, and how many responses, total and responses. So we're going to open the service request form. Upon doing so, we can see that there's two at the moment. Uh, now, when these have been completely actioned, uh, we'll delete them. There's no need to keep this data because uh, we download this data in, uh, in a form. So we're looking at Michael Davis. Uh, we can uh, highlight this row and we can scroll across and see all the information and the problem. Uh, now down here, you can also see that uh, Corey Pettit, Todd Browning, and uh, Babak uh, at the moment are the um, contributors, or in fact co-authors uh, of this uh, of this form, which means they have full access to this information also. So after I select this row, row one, row two, back to row one, I'm going to right click and I'm going to download the response as a PDF form. That's going to gather all that information and download it in the same way as they've you know, as they responded to it online or via the submission method. Now I can see <coughs> that the next number up is actually CSR. Now I've clearly done this before, um, but so just to run over this, uh, the next number would be uh, CSR um, quadruple zero one zero. Michael Davies, Michael Davies, invoice number 600696, and the next customer, CSR, quadruple zero, one, one, customer number, and then whatever invoice number it is. These are not separated by store. They are not separated by store. They are just, um, that's why we reference the invoice number. All right, so I'm just gonna say that. It's gonna probably copy back over the top of the other one. All right, so if I now go back over to service requests and I have a look at the form that's just come down, it's gone in slightly the wrong spot. I'll just copy it over to there and replace the existing. So there's, uh, I'll just fix that I. Okay, so here we have Michael Davies. 
If I open that up, you'll see that it comes down in the nice uh, form format. All right. So now we've got for the customer, we have them a uh, a reference number, an internal reference number. Uh, we have all this information here. Um, the beauty of having all this information like this, uh, including the invoice number, uh, is that uh, if we sir, if we uh, if we look that up in Google Drive, uh, then we will get um, we will in fact get that uh, information. All we have to do is search the uh, invoice number, uh, and it'll pop up. So, what's the next step? Well, uh, this is going to be a supplier, um, a supplier service call. So from this point, we've now given uh, the customer uh, a reference number. So in keeping with you know with records, going back to our drafts, uh, we are going to give a service response supplier. So we've ascertained that this is a supplier issue and we have a draft for this. Dear customer, please be advised that your service request has been forwarded to the appropriate supplier, in this case, KDK. Please advise ACS if you do not receive a response within 48 hours of this email. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to attach Actually, I've gone one step ahead. I apologize. Yeah, so now that we have this information, we need to create a supplier service call reference. Now, this is an old invoice, so this doesn't have the appropriate uh, formatting. So we're now going to just do it a bit mixed up. We're going to hop back uh, into our old invoice, uh, well, not old invoice, we're gonna hop back into the invoice that we've been using as a sample, which is uh, the Jackson and Co, which we had under Lankove and Jackson, or Jones and Co, sorry. So we'll hop into Jones and Co. Um, so kind of pretending that this is uh, the same invoice uh, or the same type of thing, which it actually is, it's a Vola 3. Um, you'll see that there's a service uh, supplier service request section over to the side here. Okay. So we're going to unlock it with admin 123 exclamation. I'm just going to get rid of this because that's old. That's fine. So again, unlock, review, unlock 123 exclamation. So now we can edit it. Okay, it's at this point that we need to enter the relevant information, such as the, going back to the invoice, you can see the product code, which is a Vola 3. We're automatically gonna get the uh, supplier code there. Quantity, the problem, the problem being uh, cracked on arrival. <coughs> the supplier name, KDK. Installation date from the form, we saw that that was uh, the 12th um, just gonna, um, just fix that formatting there. Uh, form attached, we can attach the form, so we can change that to a yes. Images, well, we could request images. Um, I'll be comfortable doing this without images, but if, if they're required, we can. Purchase order number. Now, this is going to be available to us um, if it's something that was ordered in individually. And that would be available on the invoice over here under PO. This is a stock item, however. So you know, that, that, needs, that takes a bit of researching in terms of the, uh, the purchase order. But let's say it was a uh, RAM product or a Parker Yamson product, uh, like some taps or something. Chances are um, you would find that uh, purchase order number uh, right here and the date received, etc., uh, etc. Et OK, 
going back to the service request, get rid of anything else you don't need as far as formulas are concerned, supply invoice number. This you will find on the purchase order itself. So under purchase orders, and then that particular purchase order for that particular item, uh, you should find, if I looked at this purchase order for example, the, invoice, the supplier invoice right here, once this is received in. That information is very useful as far as uh, referencing is concerned. The purchase order date, again, that'll be on the purchase order. The customer address, name, phone number, which is the mobile, copied from the invoice, very useful uh, because they will need that, the supplier. And in terms of the service request number, okay, so this is when we basically need to go and have a look at the next number in the uh, increment on that particular service request or yeah, particular uh, store. Uh, this is uh, an eight, so this is the Lane Cove store. So service requests, Lane Cove, and the next is, uh, well, it's the first, uh, SR800-100, SR800-100, just unbolt that. Uh, and this is where we print or save to PDF into the service request folder and under supplier and crow's nest and save down as PDF. Okay, so there we have it. So we have, uh, oh, and I made an error. I'm sorry, I should have changed the file name, which I'll do now. Uh, that file name when I saved it as PDF should have been uh, SR800100. And it should have also been in Lanco. Terrible. Fixed. Okay. So there we are. So we've got the PDF, we have the information. Um, some more information would be useful uh, and would normally be available uh, if it was uh, something that was ordered in, but uh, you get the flavour of this. Um, so then the uh, next course of action is to uh, then send an email to the supplier with this PDF explaining that we need action on a um, on the service. So we've advised the customer that we've done this and we've given them their, re their CSR reference number. Okay, and we've attached a copy of their internal customer reference which is CSR quadruple zero one zero Michael Davies. That goes off to the customer. They have a reference to come back to, which we can refer to, and then we send that off. We send the separate PDF from the worksheet off to the supplier. And as far as I'm concerned, that's done. All actions necessary have been taken. Um, we can't uh, constantly follow up suppliers to make sure their service calls have been done, the, uh, the process is convoluted enough as it is and difficult and time consuming. Um, but that's a, that's a good system uh, with uh, references for the customer and the supplier um, with all relevant information included. I know that one's a bit tricky, um, so uh, yeah, so please refer to it as many times as possible and uh, please refer to me, Matthew Poulter, uh, for any additional